Good morning, good morning, good morning, good day everybody. Thank you so much for joining us out here with your Escape to Nature experience here on Amakala Game Reserve. And look what we have started with. Male lion with an Elant kill. How cool is that? Brilliant. Hello everybody, thank you very much again for joining us. My name is Andrew and I have Morgan behind the camera and we're going to be exploring a Makala game reserve but I doubt we're going to go very far. We're going to stick around with this male lion for as long as we can. You know what we might see is uh, because of the amount of, of meat here in relation to how much he can consume, thirst is going to become a problem for him at some point and he's going to need to leave this carcass. Now here in Amakala the water is quite scarce and all the watering holes and places where he might drink are very far and few between. And so for him, if he got thirsty, he would have to get up and start walking quite a distance to get some, some water. And then when he comes back, he would probably find jackals have already been here or are there. And indeed, he's uh, just started to feed now. I just want to see, okay, so his nose is a little bit got a blood. Okay, so he has opened up there. Just a little bit of blood on the nose there. Now we're going to see if he's going to try and drag this carcass. I don't think he is. I think he's quite, quite happy with exactly where it is right now. Bush baby, good question. Um, he feels content, he feels quite comfortable exactly where it is right now. Um, so bear in mind that uh, the scavengers out here, it's, it's brown hyena and jackals. Now brown hyena being a more solitary hyena opposed to that of spotted hyena which are you know clan orientated animals. Brown hyena is not really going to do anything to intimidate this male lion. It's going to be more the opposite way around. This male lion will would, would attempt to kill a brown hyena. So they, they're more than likely to stay away while he's here. Jackal? Jackal's not going to try a thing here while that male lion is here. So he's pretty happy um, exactly where it is now. But if there were spotted hyenas and a clan of them, even four spotted hyenas, they would run in here and uh, they would intimidate him and could drive him off the carcass. Of course, he's going to growl and try and fight back. But at the end of the day, he also wants to avoid injury. Just look at that tiny one. I believe it is the one that we initially saw the last time that we saw a herd of elephants. Oh, and I'm still so clumsy. These silly adults don't even ask me when we're moving on or anything. They just start walking and then I have to follow them. Oh, that's a very tiny baby. How amazing is this? And hopefully this means that we'll be seeing them a little bit more frequently oh there's quite a few youngsters actually i think that very tiny one is a new one because as i say the last time that i can recall and i speak under correction but i think the last time that we saw an actual herd of elephants or i at least was probably whew, i would say december so it's really been a while. So that very, very small one, you can see the other two calves are very inquisitive about it. And he's still got very dark coloration. So I think that is a new baby. And how amazing to be sharing this with all of you. I'm definitely so, so, so excited. Oh, hello, photobomb. Where is your tail? Shine. We've got a stompy. But how amazing is this? Randall, you would like to know what is the social structure of wildebeest herds? This is also something that can vary. And I say this because I personally have experienced this from, from reserve to reserve. I've walk, worked in the Waterbergs, I've worked in Greater Kruger. And with regards to topography, geology, everything, and ultimately circumstance, the behaviors and the social structures definitely was a lot different. 
But generally, for the most part, wildebeest form these herds. And then they have males and females and calves within those herds. But when a, when a male wildebeest wants to woo some ladies, <laughs> he actually, they are very clever again. That's why I say I don't think they're very stupid. Because they will actually go to a bare patch of swill. He'll use the scent glands on his face and he will rub his scent off. And then he'll just sort of chill out there for the day, waiting for females to bypass him and then say, Whew, we love your cologne. Would you like to make babies with us? <laughs> and then from there on, herds get formed. But with regard to actual dominance and all of that, and this is why I say I've seen different social structures. With regard to dominance, um, for instance, when you look at zebras, zebras have got a harem, there's a stallion in charge, and then you've got a hierarchy within the females or the maize. With wildebeest, I have seen herds where there's one particular dominant male, and then I've also seen cases where there's various, almost like buffalo, I want to say. When you look at buffalo as well, yes, they will be the older and the more dominant male. But in terms of protecting and defending, all of them take charge. Females, males, especially the older bulls that are a bit more stronger and experienced. But for the most part, Randall, they just form... <laughs> What's with these oryxes today? Goodness, very feisty. But um, it really can depend. But for the most part, you will see wildebeests either individually, and those will be your males that are yet to join a herd. And then you can also have herds of females, males. But there's not necessarily a male that is the only one in charge. There can be various of them. But for myself, Lisa, your water hole naturalist, it has been a beautiful day and I thank you all for spending it with us, sending through your questions, your comments and just really having a passion for wildlife. We cannot tell you how much that means to us. And then of course from Andrew and Amakala and his hungry lion. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And Morgan, our wonderful cameraman, let me not forget him. And then thank you so much to our amazing directors and tech team in F FC. Just know that I appreciate you all so much. And none of this is possible without you guys and of course our wonderful viewers. But I do believe it will be a beautiful Monday for the rest of the day. Hopefully we see a lot of things on Sunset Safari. I will definitely be watching. And I hope all of you will too. But for now, I'm just going to leave you with this beautiful scene of the beautiful Okokuyo in Namibia.